Okay, you're back with another tutorial video by me, Cool Dude Clem, and today I'm going to show you how to put custom firmware on your onto your PSP. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you everything you need to do. Now, before we start, it's a good idea to back up everything that you have on your memory card, which I have done here. Now, before we can install the um, custom firmware, we need to install firmware 3.90 because you cannot install the custom firmware if you have any firmware on there that's older than this. Now I've chosen 3.90 because that's the one that works best. You just go onto line, you go onto this site here, I will provide a link for this and uh, select this file here which is PSP firmware 3.90 and there it is right there. Okay so now we've got the um, firmware update I'll just extract that onto the desktop so we can easily get to it. Now we're going to need a program called PSP Grader. I'll provide a link to this. So when it's downloaded, just open the RAR file and click on the .exe that's in there, and it will install PSP Grader onto your computer. Okay, so we now have the icon for it right here. Now here where it says Load Eboot, you click that and then find the eboot file we downloaded. And I put mine onto the desktop, so that's where I'm going to go. And there it is. So I'll just select that. Now we'll leave this bit here as it is. We don't need to change anything there. Now, we must make sure that we've selected the right drive here. My PSP is drive H. And it says H here, so that's all okay. So we just click here where it says create Pandora memory stick, which is also known as a magic memory stick, and off it goes. The memory stick light on your PSP should be flashing when it's doing this, and if it is, everything is going just fine. Okay, now that's all done, we press OK. Now what we've just done is um, created a magic memory stick, which the PSP can boot from, and the program it boots, updates the firmware to version 3.90. Now the PSP won't boot from this without a special service battery, which is also known as a Pandora battery. Now you can get one of these special batteries from eBay and places like that, but I'm going to show you how to make your own. So now I'm going to show you how to make a service battery. You can modify your own PSP battery to do this. First of all, we've got to open this bad boy up and make a little modification to it. So now the battery's been taken apart, we can make the necessary modification. We have the back of the battery here, the rest of the battery, and a separator. The separator just goes on like this. Now what we've got to do to turn this battery into a service battery, we just need to break one of the circuit paths, and in doing that, that will turn the battery into a service battery. should be able to see a little 19 here. Now I'm going to show a close-up, a real big close-up of where to cut. Now you need to cut the circuit path there, and when we've done that, the modification is complete, and it is now a service battery, or Pandora battery if you want to call it that. Right, so now we've created a service battery. We need to test that it works. But before we do that, the card must be taken out. We'll just leave that on the side for now. Now for the moment of truth. So if we put the battery in and we get the green light but the screen stays black, we've successfully created a service battery. Of course can't even get the stupid thing to go in. Okay, so the power light is on and the screen is black. So, so far so good. We have successfully created a Pandora battery. So now we'll just take that out and on to the next step. Now we know that we've turned our battery into a service battery. Next step is to boot from the uh, magic memory card we made. So firstly, let's put the memory card in. We hold down the L shoulder button while we put the battery in, which can be a bit difficult. Okay, now my screen is a bit messed up here. You won't have this white bar on the screen, but um, my PSP has been like this for some time. So, just press X to install the 
firmware and it's now updating the firmware. This will take a couple of minutes and when it's done you'll see somewhere on the screen press X to shut down so you press that and the PSP will shut down and the next time you turn it on it will boot up with the new firmware. Now we can install the custom firmware. This is the site we need to go to to get the custom firmware. You need to download these two files here. This one which is the custom firmware and this one which is the official firmware. You need both of these files. So we just download those two files. So when we've downloaded we should have these two RAR files here. I'm now doing a direct screen capture so you can see this better. We need to extract these now. So I'm just going to go in and extract these. So we now have two new folders. In this one called PSP 500 FW Update, you'll find a file called eboot.php. Now you must rename this one to 500. And in the other folder, you'll notice it has two subfolders, one of the folders being called update, and in there you'll see another file called eboot.php. Now you do not change this file, leave it exactly as it is. So next thing to do is plug in the PSP. And then open it so we can view the files on the memory card. Now you go to this folder here that's called PSP and then the folder that's called game. Now I'll just shrink this window down a bit so we can work here. Then you go into this folder here again and drag the folder that's called update into the game folder. And then from the other folder we, we take the renamed file and we put that into the update folder. Now just check that those two files are there, and there they are. So now we disconnect the PSP from the computer and scroll over to Game. You go to Memory Stick, and you should see a little thing here that says PSP Update version 5.00. Press X to run it, and it will come up. And it should load it. There we go, it's now loaded. It's now verified the file. So just press X to start the update. So in a little while we should see this main start screen. So just press X to proceed. Next there's a seemingly endless list of terms and conditions which you have to scroll through and finally accept. Then there's another seemingly endless list of new features. So just scroll through that until you can press X. And it will finally start installing the new firmware. So when it's done, you just press X to shut down the PSP, and it's all finished. And now we have the custom firmware. with some new features. So I hope this has uh, been helpful and until next time, goodbye.